across the spectrum of podcasting, from gigantic show to private show, is there room for keeping things small on purpose? Let's find out. Hello and welcome to another Podcast Pontifications with me, Evo Terra. Podcasting is the next big revolution. Well, maybe the word big is the problem here. We need to think about the way that the things that we do on the internet work, the communities that we build. It is assumed, uh, wrongly by the way, I'll just state up out of the gate, it is wrongly assumed by many of the podcast pundits out there, hmm, that's me, that the primary purpose of having a show, of having your own podcast for yourself personally or for your business, most of my clients are businesses, is to make that show grow as big as it possibly can. And that is a false assumption. And I don't think about it very often, but I was thinking about it this morning and thought that it would be an excellent opportunity to bring up the conversation here. If we look back at the history of the internet, as I began and didn't finish, lots of things were done on purpose to be small. A lot of things are, a lot of people are creating content, placing it on the web with no aspirations of growing big. At its core, at its root, the web, the internet, I know they're two different things, but let's just deal with that, is a communication medium. It is designed to facilitate the publishing of information, the exchange of conversation in the form of text, images, media like we have with audio and video. That's it. It is a communication platform that does not require you to have gigantic numbers to be successful. In fact, there's no implied success built into the underpinnings of the way that the internet works, and the same holds true for podcasting. There is no inherent need for something to bubble to the top. It doesn't need it. We, we simply do not need it. The web doesn't need it. Podcasting doesn't need it. And I think we lose sight of that sometimes. Now, if you want to make a gigantic podcast, great. But on this episode, I want to talk about the merits of podcasting to a purposely tiny audience. That tiny audience could be just the employees of your company. That tiny audience could be just your circle of friends that get together every month for a, weekly, a, a monthly happy hour. That tiny group could be a very small group of people who are all interested in one very specific, highly focused thing that you got to be a little weird <laughs> to really, really enjoy with no aspirations of being huge. Maybe it's a local podcast. Maybe it's something that is so hyper-focused and local that there's only a handful of people in your given city, in your given geography, in your neighborhood, in your apartment complex that want to get it. Now, you may think that's weird. Why would I invest all this money, Evo, in hiring someone like yourself or buying this $400 microphone if I'm not going to reach a gigantic audience? Well, here's the reality of that. We humans spend all sorts of money on things that just make us happy without any intent of return. That's item number one. Item number two is the value equation between gigantic office, gigantic audience and the amount of money that you spend isn't a straight line. No one is paying you, unless of course you're doing a pay for fee podcast, no one is paying you to listen to your show. It costs you the same amount of money to produce a show for one person to listen as it does for 100,000 people to listen. It costs you exactly the same. It's a sunk cost fallacy. But let's get back to tininess. Purposely tiny. And what, what's the evidence this has actually happened out there? Uh, how about communities and groups? Communities and groups that exist online don't have to be large. Granted, 
If you go to services like Facebook, for example, you will find lots of communities that are very, very, very large. Quite a few podcast support groups, podcast advice groups exist, what have thousands, tens of thousands, maybe even hundreds of thousands. I'm not sure what the number is. A gigantic amount of members on there. But for every one of them, there are dozens, if not hundreds, of much, much smaller communities that exist to only serve a tiny audience. Tiny on purpose. There are newsletters. There is, in fact, there's a company that powers newsletters called Tiny Letter owned by MailChimp, but nonetheless, Tiny, I think it is, Tiny Letter is designed to be tiny. That's it. (laughs) That's its whole reason for being is to make things tiny. If you go big, then there are other solutions for you. But if you've got a small audience and you don't want to grow that audience to huge numbers, and sometimes you don't, we can beta release things. We only want a small group of people to read or listen to something that we have produced the tiny community for that. And there's a rationale for doing that in podcasting. There's a rationale for doing that in podcasting in ways that don't... Let me change the way I want to talk about this for a second. When something gets big, it changes. Bigger isn't better. Bigger is different. More is different. The more listeners you have to your show, the bigger your audience gets the different pressures you will experience. But when you have a goal of keeping something small and you're purposely creating content for that goal of keeping it small, there's a little chance of it growing. I suppose that's, that's always a possibility. But when you design things small from the beginning, there's less chance of that change happening. And I'm change by the way is good. Change should always happen, but but when things get big accidentally, then that change is a little squishy. But if you design it on purpose to be small, there's less chance of that unexpected weirdness happening. Now, I suppose that's always possible as long as you're publishing to the various platforms, which I think you should. If you're going to do a small podcast, you still need to make it available on various platforms just to make it easier for your small audience to get it. So you have to publish it on Apple Podcasts and Spotify, I think, because the other way is private. I'm not talking about a private. I'm talking about something that is public but intended to be small. You need to get it out there. But you don't have to worry about a lot of the discovery issues, whether those are real or imaginary that that we have in podcasting. And while it's possible somebody might grab hold of something and make it bigger than you wanted, that's always a, a risk that's always a possibility, it's probably not going to happen. I mean, honestly, the odds of that happening are pretty small, so I think you shouldn't worry about it too much. I think there's value in keeping things small on purpose. I think your audience will appreciate it. I think you will appreciate it. There is some value there. Now, not saying you have to do this. Not saying that you have to do this, but Every day I come on this program and talk about various things to make podcasting better in the future, and we oftentimes, or I oftentimes, assume that means bigger and making your show reach a larger audience. But there are a lot of people listening who say, hey, that's not what I want to do. Yeah, I want to make my show better, but I I don't care if it grows on beyond this 10 people that are listening, these 100 people. That's who I'm doing it for. Can't I do that? Absolutely, you can. Keep things small on purpose. For yourself, even for your business, for your community, there are ways to make podcasting work that do not require a gigantic audience. Yeah, interesting stuff about podcasting. It's a wide open field. You can do whatever you want, but there are some good best practices. Now, of course, if you need some help with those best practices, with those best practices, I would love to help you with those best practices. Get in touch with me, please. Evo at podcastlaunch.pro. You can check out podcastlaunch.pro, which I'm probably going to revamp completely in the next few weeks. Podcastlaunch.pro to see a list of the services that my firm currently offers our clients. And I shall be back tomorrow with yet another podcast pontifications. Cheers!